Hello and welcome everybody to our first ever virtual fall transfer visit days. My name is Joe Herrera and I'm an associate director here at the University of St. Thomas in charge of our transfer population. Uh, before we start our event today, I would like to first uh, want to thank all of our active military, our veterans and their families for their service on this Veterans Day. Before we kick things off, um, I wanna give you a little highlight of what we're going to do today. I get the pleasure of kind of giving you a little overview of the admissions process here at St. Thomas. Uh, we'll then have some experts from St. Thomas that will discuss things like uh, academic life here at St. Thomas, our student life, residence life, and all that fun thing called financial aid. Um, lastly, the day will end with our students, uh, some current transfer students joining us. Well, you'll have an opportunity to ask them specific questions about the St. Thomas experience for our transfer students. All right. As I said before, I get to start and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the admissions process and very specifically about what we need um, in order to consider a transfer application complete. Um, so first and foremost, students need to go out to our webpage and complete the online application. I do want to let you know that we are currently admitting for both fall and spring semesters. Um, so you can apply for either one. We are accepting applications for both and the requirements for both terms are the same. So we do require that, high, that the actual application. We need official high school transcripts and we're really specifically looking for that final transcript. Every once in a while, we have students that apply to us as a first time first year or a freshman applicant, and they submit a preliminary high school transcript that does not have final grades or that graduation date. Uh, so we do look for that. So if you're applying to St. Thomas as a transfer, we in fact knew, do need your official high school transcript um, with your graduation date. We will need all college transcripts. So if you've attended more than one institution, we'll need final, well, final eventually, but we'll need official college transcripts from each institution that you've attended. Uh, we'll need a Dean of Students form, and that is a form that basically is looking for your disciplinary history, or as I like to say it, how you're playing with others, um, to make sure that there are no issues uh, that we need to be aware of here at St. Thomas. Here at the University of St. Thomas, uh, the office that would complete that would be the, our Dean of Students office. Um, so it might be similar at your institution, uh, but it could also be a different location. That's not uncommon that it's at a registrar's office. Just find out who's uh, in charge of keeping a track of the student's disciplinary history and then submit that form to that student. Most of our local community colleges and colleges are very familiar with this form. They'll know exactly what to do with it. You need to complete the top portion of that form, which is basically your permission for them to complete the bottom portion, and they will submit the bottom portion and submit it off to us. We do have some additional optional documents that you can submit. So official ACT or SAT test results, they're not required, but you're more than welcome to submit them. Um, on the application, you will be asked to potentially write a, uh, submit a writing sample or an essay. That is your choice. You do not have to do that if you don't want to, um, but it is a, a way for us to get a better understanding of your writing ability. Uh, we do like it when you explain a little bit more about who you are in that writing sample, then submit something that you've written for class. So you can either write something on a topic, one of the two topics that we present, or something that gives us a little bit more insight, a little bit more personal insight on who you are. That is your choice. And then letters of recommendation are also not required, but you are more than welcome to submit them. Um, so as I mentioned before, we are currently accepting for both fall and spring semester. Um, so what does that timeline look like? Um, I think at every school that you've gone to, you'll probably have or have already heard that we'd love to have you visit campus and that'd be a great starting point. So we are definitely no different. Uh, we have wonderful opportunities to do virtual uh, appointments on campus where you can sit down and meet with an admissions counselor. Um, or we are currently still open um, to take 
uh, an actual on-campus visit as well, where you could come on campus and meet with one of the transfer counselors in person and tour the campus. We also have a virtual tour option. So if you can't get to campus or if something changes in the future and we can't allow you on campus, but you'll have the opportunity to still um, tour campus as we go. So as I kind of pointed out at the beginning, the very first thing you need to do next is really kind of complete and submit that application. Uh, once you do that, then we can obviously start evaluating your uh, application and make an admissions decision. Um, and once we make an admissions decision, then some things uh, down the line here also come available. Um, it's always important, and Tammy will talk to you much more about this later, about submitting your FAFSA or your Minnesota Dream Act. And that generally opens already. It's open on October, um, and we encourage you to complete that as quickly as possible. Uh, once we have that completed application, like I mentioned before, we get to review it, and then we'll make a, an admissions decision. That generally takes um, anywhere from a week to two weeks on the transfer side, and we'll turn that around. Specifically, we're focusing on spring right now, so it might take a little bit longer for our fall students. In the fall, we generally don't start making true admissions decisions until January when most of those fall grades have come in, um, but we do evaluate some of those early, so there's a chance. Uh, so currently we're actively on the spring term. Uh, once you apply and hopefully are admitted to St. Thomas, the very next thing in line would be submitting a confirming deposit um, and or a housing deposit. Uh, we do not require students uh, to stay on campus right now for our transfer students uh, unless you are in your first semester. And that's going to be happening for fall, not spring, but fall. Um, we will have a residency requirement, so there is a chance a couple of our students will fall with inside of that. We'll talk you through it as we get closer to that, but just know for spring, no requirement, fall potentially, and our counselors will guide you through that. Uh, we have a $200 confirming deposit and an additional $200 housing deposit if you want to stay on campus. Uh, after you've confirmed, uh, then you'll have the opportunity to reach out and talk to academic counseling about registering for courses. In spring, that will happen here in December. And in, for fall students, that doesn't happen until May. So we have plenty of time for those fall students. Spring students, we're right around the corner to opening that up. So the earlier you're confirmed, the earlier you'll have the opportunity to sit down and register for classes. Uh, and then a little bit later in that process, housing uh, will come through and reach out to you in spring. They, really, uh, they reach out to you and co contact you individually. Uh, and in fall, they will have you fill out a form. Once again, they happen after a student confirms. And generally, it's gonna be um, in January for spring and it's gonna be in August or July, actually, July actually uh, for fall. Uh, and then everybody will be encouraged uh, and will be required to attend an orientation session. And once again, they will happen just a few days before the beginning of the term for our transfer students, their half day experiences. Um, so you can ask some questions and we can give you some really good info and tidbits about starting your term here at the University of St. Thomas. And then you get to start your first day of classes. So one of the things that um, our transfer students really like to ask us questions about is specifically credit transfer. So how do your credits transfer or what do we look for when we're looking for credits to transfer to the University of St. Thomas? So in general, here at the University of St. Thomas, we ask um, kind of three big things when we're considering if your credits will transfer. One uh, is the, the course that you're taking coming from a liberal arts based concept. So are there liberal arts based courses? Our education here at St. Thomas is liberal arts. So we're looking for a similar type of courses. Uh, are the courses coming from a regionally accredited college or university? Um, most of the schools in which our students look to transfer to St. Thomas are regionally accredited. There's a location on our website if you're not sure that will help you pinpoint that. Um, and then have you received a C minus or higher in that course? So students must receive a C minus or higher in a liberal arts course for us to consider it. Um, every once in a while, students do really have an opportunity to take courses that I consider are a little bit more technical in nature. Um, our community college, for example, have a lot of technical courses they can consider. Um, they don't fit the type of education that we have here at St. Thomas, and those courses won't transfer. So auto tech, for example, might be something along those lines. But as long as they fit a liberal arts education, they're college level, 
um, and they come from an accredited college or university, we will consider them. In order for us to evaluate them, you must submit uh, your final, and not your final, your official college transcript from each of the institutions that you're attending. And then after you're formally admitted, our registrar office will do that actual evaluation and they'll apply those credits to your record and submit you an email uh, that will allow you to see what it is your credit evaluation at that point in time. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about that before you apply and get accepted to St. Thomas, our counselors will do an unofficial evaluation on your behalf. All you need to do is reach out, uh, make an appointment with them, submit uh, your transcripts. Idea that those can be unofficial and our counselors will sit down and do an unofficial evaluation for you, hopefully giving you an idea of how those courses may transfer to St. Thomas. Again, I think the big thing here I want to leave you with before I send it over to Shanita is um, we here at the undergraduate admissions are here to help you. Um, we have people, um, three counselors dedicated to transfers. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to definitely let us know. So now I am going to turn it over to Dr. Shanita White. She is the Associate Director for Student Achievement here at St. Thomas and she will talk to you about the academic experience while you're here at St. Thomas. Dr. Shanita White. But the core again is what matters. Um, and we think it matters because it gives you a very broad knowledge. And I, I've heard sometimes from some transfer students that, you know, God, the core is kind of rigorous, you know, but we think it gives you a broad knowledge of a lot of topics, um, analytical problem solving skills, um, strong ethical compass, uh, creative, strategic thinking, flexibility, intercultural knowledge. So we really think that we have crafted a curriculum that is really going to prepare you to go out into this world um, and really make an impact. And so um, although it, it may seem daunting, um, we, we think that uh, it is beneficial and it is worth it and we will help you get through it um, and you will be able to graduate, you know, in the time frame that you are hoping for. So that is a little bit of a um, lens into the academic experience. We have lots of support services that are here at St. Thomas, and I am here if you have any questions during the Q&A um, time to answer anything, anything else that may be on your mind about the academic experience. So I hope that you will choose St. Thomas. We would love to have you here, and I will now turn it over to my colleague, Betsy Lofgren in Academic Counseling. Hello, everybody. My name is Betsy Lofgren. And I, as Shanita said, I work in academic counseling. I have been at St. Thomas for 22 years. So clearly, I'm a big fan of St. Thomas. Um, I want to tell you about how we serve transfer students in the transfer process. Um, once you're accepted and confirmed through the admissions office, then you're referred to our office to meet with one of the academic counselors. I'm just one of about eight. And we will help you get registered for your first semester. Ideally, you would have met with admissions um, and already had an evaluation of your transfer courses. So by the time you meet with us in academic counseling, you should know approximately about how many classes you need to graduate. In our meeting with you though, we'll start by going over specifically the requirements for graduation again. And then if you feel like you want to petition any of your transfer courses and you didn't already do that through admissions, we can start that process for you. Just know that petitioning a class will require a syllabus for the appropriate department chair to make an assessment. Um, we'll talk to you about any placement exams you may need to take, which could be math, foreign language, and chemistry, if your major requires chemistry. All students are required to take at least one math or statistics class and two semesters of a foreign language. If you speak a language um, that is not taught at St. Thomas, you do have an opportunity to petition for a waiver of that language. Some majors, specifically STEM majors, might require a math placement exam right away. So if you haven't taken calculus or pre-calculus at your previous institution, uh, we could help get you set up with a um, um, math placement exam with the Math Resource Center. Um, typically, students will register for anywhere between 12 and 18 credits in a semester. Most of our classes are four credits, but if you're a business major, the introductory business classes are two credits, um, and that means that they meet for just half the semester, so seven weeks instead of 14. 
Um, a few other majors also have some two credit classes, but mostly you'll find four credit classes. And so typically you're taking four four credit classes. Um, we will help you find the classes you need to graduate and advise you on the best path to complete your requirements in the most efficient and quickest way. Um, we often have a section or two of core curriculum classes set aside just for new transfer students. So if one of those works in your schedule, you'll have a chance to meet other students who are also new to St. Thomas, but not necessarily new to the college experience. Um, academic counseling is part of the Center for Student Achievement, which is both a place and a website um, that is meant to enhance your student experience. We often refer students to our partners in the Center for Student Achievement, like Study Abroad, Pre-Health Advising, Career Development, and Undergraduate Research Opportunities. Um, we will serve as your advisor until you officially declare a major. And once you do that, you'll have a faculty member in your department to guide you the rest of the way to graduation. Of course, we are always available to meet with you whenever you need help with anything, like referrals to disability resources or tutoring or whatever you need. We also meet with students regularly to coach them on study skills, time management, and maybe negotiating with a faculty member. Whatever you need, we're there for you. Um, we're here to be advocates for you and to help you succeed academically. And now I will turn you over to Margaret from Campus Life. Thank you, Betsy. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Margaret Cahill, and I'm the director of Campus Life. Uh, in Campus Life, we are committed to helping you enhance your experience outside of the classroom. We provide inclusive and meaningful ways for you to build connections and get involved in campus. Basically, we're talking about fun. We want you to have fun while you're here at St. Thomas. Uh, but seriously, getting involved helps develop a variety of skills. You can build your social network and step outside your comfort zone to meet new people or try new things while you're here. Just as students uh, vary their comfort levels and trying new things, we also know that energy levels can change from um, week to week. So we offer a wide range of opportunities for you to get involved and connected no matter what you're interested in. It can be from the more passive where students can, you can just attend and watch something like a, a movie or live music shows um, to the more active where you join a club or go on a uh, weekend excursion or participate on one of our team events or intramurals. Regardless of what you're interested in, they both provide options for you to um, attend alone or to meet up with students and go in groups. Included in these are weekly events hosted by our star programming board, such as Thursday Night Live, which is live music um, in scooters weekend excursions where they explore different um, locations around the Twin Cities, movies and trivia to name just a couple. We also help host a number of St. Thomas traditions such as March Through the Arches for all of our new students and that includes our new transfer students. Um, homecoming, holidays at St. Thomas, Tommy Fest in the spring and senior days for our graduating Tommies. In addition to our campus-wide events, we also host events specific for our transfer students. Our STAR programming board has a transfer student intern position and our student government also has a transfer student senator position on their general council. These two positions work together to assist transfer students in getting connected to our campus, each other and other students. Some examples of some past transfer student events include miniature golf, bowling and pizza nights, uh, bagel and coffee socials, midterm and finals survival kit nights, and evening social events. And again, just an opportunity for you to get connected to other transfer students and then perhaps join some of the larger events and get even further connected. Um, student clubs are another great way for um, students to explore current passion or interest or to explore something totally new. It's also a great way to meet new students. We offer a wide range of student clubs, but if there is something you are interested in and you don't see it, we would love to work with you in Campus Life to see about starting a new club. Um, some of the ways you can learn about our student clubs and organizations is through Tommy Link, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but we also host an activity fair each semester. Uh, some opportunities, um, other opportunities to engage on campus include our inclusive leadership collaboratory, um, being a club involvement or through club involvement or being a club leader, 
are called Leadership Institute, which is a, a two-day institute before, before classes start in the fall. And then we also host weekly and monthly leadership development opportunities that you can either attend or do on your own time. Lastly, I'd like to talk about Tommy Link. Tommy Link is our student engagement system that we use. You can access it um, from the Campus Life website or stthomas.edu backslash Tommy Link. And what you can find on Tommy Link is really have an opportunity to explore all the offerings um, that students can engage in, whether it's student clubs and organizations, different events hosted by our STAR or Diversity Activities Board programming groups, um, different departments on campus have market their events there. Um, when you start as a, as a new student at St. Thomas, you might be entered into a, a path that will help guide you through a number of um, important ways to engage and opportunities um, throughout the year. So I encourage you to check out Tommy Link right now as a way to just sort of get a, an idea of many of the offerings that we host. Um, and to also know on Campus Life, we're on the third floor of the Student Center right across from the Loft Coffee Bar. We are also happy to meet with you and find things that you're interested in and help you find ways to engage on campus. So again, I join my colleagues in saying we'd love to have you join us at St. Thomas. Next up is my colleague, Brian, from Residence Life. Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to be a part of our uh, panel today. Uh, my name is Brian Helmanak. I am our Associate Director of Residence Life here at the University of St. Thomas. Uh, and we work with housing and living on campus. Uh, so for students uh, wanting to live on campus, we provide that opportunity. Um, and we do provide that opportunity for our transfer students. Um, I'm gonna talk about really two different levels because I know that we have uh, students here today potentially that are looking to come for both the spring semester and then also uh, potentially arriving for the upcoming fall semester. So uh, for those of you who may be looking at spring semester, we are in that process and have already been working with uh, transfer students who have been admitted. Um, and we do a, what we do is essentially a rolling process for housing uh, assignments for our spring semester. Uh, so once you are accepted um, through the admissions process, you will place a housing deposit with admissions and then uh, we will be in contact with you to get some housing preference information based on kind of what year you are transferring in on, your age, other things. Um, and we'll send you the appropriate form to, to fill out for us on their preferences. A great resource for um, our students, particularly our transfer students, is our website. Um, so if you search the St. Thomas website for Residence Life, uh, you will see a listing of all of our housing available. For students who are transferring in their in their first year, so we, you're a, a first year transfer, or a freshman transfer. Um, our first year residence halls are all going to be generally available to you. I will put one caveat on there is that we do have one hall that is filled and we do anticipate to be continued to be filled through this uh, spring and that is Tommy North, which is one of our brand new uh, residence halls for our first year students. Uh, very popular. Um, and uh, so that may be difficult, but one of our other new residence halls, Tommy East, which is more of a suite style hall would be available to those students, along with our traditional halls of Brady, Ireland, Dowling and Murray. Um, there's very different living styles as a part of that doubles and singles. We have a lot of space here for our spring semester. For those who are upper division, a little bit older or coming in as uh, sophomores or higher, we have suite style and apartment style housing on our campus as well. So some buildings that may include that would be Flynn, Morrison, uh, Tommy East. Uh, and then we do have some apartment buildings on our east and west block of our mid campus uh, with some buildings uh, for apartments at 2151 and 2085 grand. Uh, we have been lucky to be able to offer this spring and this fall um, a transfer rate for our transfer students for housing. So you'll pay based on if you're in a double room. And for us, a double room means you share a bedroom with somebody else on our camp, uh, in our halls, or you'll pay a single rate based on you having your own room, whether that's being in a traditional style hall or in an apartment style hall. That helps kind of bring the cost down for you as a transfer student if you want to give a, a live on campus. Um, and it also gives you some opportunity to 
uh, explore kind of our different options that we have uh, for you. We do hope for those of you who are looking to uh, come to St. Thomas in the fall of next year, so fall of 2021, uh, we hope to be able to offer very similar rates for transfer students next year as well. That has not been finalized yet, unfortunately, so I, I can't assure you of that, but it is one of the options that we are uh, pushing and looking at for this upcoming year as well. Um, I'd say really quickly, um, if for those students who get all of their information this spring, by um, really the first week of December, we do our initial assignments for spring semester on uh, December 9th, excuse me. Um, and then it is a rolling basis after that. So even if you put in your deposit after December 9th, maybe it's in January that you deposit, we still will have space available and we'll work with you to find the best space available uh, that meets your needs and what you're looking for as an on-campus experience. Uh, for those who are looking to come in the fall, we generally will start collecting deposits here in the spring semester, and then we will be in touch throughout the spring semester. Uh, but we really don't do assignments until toward the end of July, and that is for all of our incoming students. Uh, so there may be a time period where you're in contact with us, we get preference information from you, and then you may not hear from us for a while. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it is uh, the nature of we want to make sure that all of our incoming class, freshmen, transfer, whatever they may be, have a similar experience of being able to get that excitement of knowing where they're living at the same time. So um, it is something that we strive to do and, and involve our transfer students as a part of that process. One last thing I would like to just point out about living on campus, not only is it a great uh, way for you to meet some other people um, and to be able to connect with the community a lot in the same ways that Margaret described from campus life, we also have something called the residential connection team. And that really is like our programming board for our residence halls. And so they are doing a lot of events uh, to be able to help uh, integrate our students into the campus experience, uh, fun events. They can be both virtual or in person, uh, depending on kind of the size of the event and everything else that's going on. Um, but it is a good way to start making connections. It is also another good way to become a part of our leadership uh, team. They always have leadership positions that may be available that you can help plan those actual activities of the things you want to do. And I would say it also can be a good lead into if you are interested in becoming a resident assistant after you are on campus. Um, and even if you don't come and live on campus for us in a year, you still can apply to be an, an RA in a future year. So something to be aware of is that uh, our resident assistants or our, our undergraduate students who live and help our students in our residence halls, both meet other people, um, and are available for kind of answering those questions and being those helpers in the hall that uh, we all know that people need and in, in that experience in that transition. So um, with that, um, I'm going to turn over at this point uh, to my other colleague, Tammy, in financial aid. Hi there. <clears throat> I'm Tammy Eichelt Schroyer. I am a financial aid counselor that works with most of the transfer students that come to St. Thomas. Um, we have two primary sources of funding for transfer students. We have our merit-based transfer award and we have institutional grant assistance. Um, when you apply for admission, you're automatically considered for the transfer award. The awards range from $5,000 per year to as much as $20,000 per year. Uh, the higher a student's transfer college GPA from all their attempted college credits, the higher the scholarship would be. Um, students typically learn about their transfer award uh, right away when they're accepted to the university. Usually the details of that are in your acceptance letter. Um, the second type of funding we have is St. Thomas need-based grant assistance. And maybe um, Kyle or Joe, I just have a slide that just kind of talks a little bit about different financial aid. Um, to be, if you could just pull that up, yeah. Um, the second, uh, the, the need-based grant assistance that we have at St. Thomas, um, we determine your eligibility for that grant when you complete the FAFSA application every year. Um, so as Joe indicated, if you are interested in transferring to St. Thomas this spring, we would want you to complete the 2021 academic year FAFSA. Um, the specific years are posted in the bottom left-hand corner of the slide. Um, if you have already filled that out for your current college, then really um, we would just want you to add our school code 
The school code is listed in the top right hand corner. It is 002345. Um, if instead you were looking at transferring to St. Thomas next fall or perhaps even spring of 2022, um, then we would want you to fill out the 2122 academic year FAFSA. And both of those forms are available now. You would just go to fafsa.ed.gov. Um, let's see. Uh, in addition, so when we receive your FAFSA, we determine your financial need, and that helps us determine whether or not you qualify for St. Thomas grant um, for, from the university. Students that qualify for St. Thomas Grant can receive several thousand dollars. It really just kind of depends on your remaining financial need. Completing the FAFSA also allows us to consider you for the federal Pell Grant program and Minnesota State Grant program if you're a Minnesota resident. Those grants, the federal and state grants, can total over $12,000 per academic year for some students. So it really is, um, there's quite a few generous grant programs available to you. Um, when you complete the FAFSA, it also allows us to consider you for low interest federal loan programs, um, as well as need based campus work study or on campus employment. Those are positions where you can work on job uh, on campus in a job. Uh, those jobs start at 1125 an hour and you specify how you are paid, you may have it credit your account to help pay your, your balance, or you can receive a paycheck every two weeks for the hours you've worked. Um, regardless of when you decide to transfer to St. Thomas, it would serve you well to finish as strongly as you can academically at your current school so that you can be considered for a stronger transfer award. Because again, the stronger your transfer GPA, the stronger your scholarship would be. Um, I also encourage people to please complete the FAFSA, even if you don't think you will qualify for any grant. Um, it's really the, the best way for me to know uh, whether or not you're going to qualify for grant assistance um, and is a good place to start. Um, the funds that I have discussed, the transfer award and the grant assistance, those funds are for domestic students, US citizens or permanent residents. International students do qualify for different funding. So if there are any international students on the call, please work with our international admissions office um, to learn more about your different scholarship programs. Uh, students that are considered undocumented should complete the Minnesota Dream Act application um, with the state of Minnesota um, instead of the FAFSA so that we can consider you for uh, Minnesota State Grant as well. Um, well, I'm excited that you're all considering St. Thomas. Please reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns um, as you plan ahead for your transfer. Um, and then I think uh, we're going to give it back to Joe here. Yes, thank you, Tammy. All right, this is the time we're going to do some live question and answer. So just as a reminder, um, the question and answer tab is kind of located below on your screen. That is where you're going to submit any questions that you have for our panel. It does look like we do have some that are coming in. Um, so the first one I can kind of see here is, um, where do I go for my FAFSA application? So Tammy, I will let you um, take that one. You're, you're muted, Tammy. It is fafsa.ed.gov. So FAFSA free application for federal student aid, fafsa.ed.gov. Thank you, Tammy. All right, there's some more coming in here. Um, here's another one, maybe for Shanita. Uh, how does St. Thomas help students get internships? Oh, wow. So um, our Career Development Center is amazing. Um, and they have lots of opportunities. And um, on their um, website, they list a ton of job opportunities. We are involved in um, career fairs. Um, also, they have lots of preparation um, workshops, um, whether you need help building your resume, you know, write, writing your resume and getting um, um, connected to employers. Um, also, depending upon which, which um, uh, major you are, are in, is some different opportunities. So, for instance, you're in the business school, a lot of accounting firms kind of come to some of the um, 
uh, to the school to meet some of the students during um, what we call convo hour, during our student club meetings and things like that. Um, also, the engineering school has a reverse career fair where um, instead of the students going around, the companies go around and actually meet the students as well. So there's a, a wealth of opportunities there for um, for internships, but I would say that we put out the information to you and the career center is there um, ready and waiting and open to serve you in that way. Thank you. All right, here's another one, maybe Margaret. Uh, how does campus life look different with COVID restrictions? Excellent, excellent question. Um, it, 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 it does look a little different. However, our priority of engaging students um, it still remains number one in our books. Um, some of the changes we have, we do a significant number of virtual events throughout the week and opportunities for students to win prizes and gift cards. Um, we do our Thursday night lives that we usually do um, live music. We have been working with artists and they're doing live streaming. And so we host different events. Um, it, and times when we are able to gather even in a small number in person, we have um, students have gathered like down in scooters to watch the live stream. Um, last week when it was absolutely gorgeous out, we actually were able to have our guitarist come to campus and do a live mini concert on the lower quad. So taking advantage of that last week of weather um, was fantastic. Um, our clubs are have remained very active online. They're meeting, they're holding virtual meetings, um, still engaging students. So I, you know, we, we really are working hard around some of the different um, restrictions with numbers and that kind of thing. But every week we have opportunities um, for students to get involved. Thank you. Here's uh, one for maybe Betsy. Betsy, uh, how many credits is, is, it, is it required to graduate from St. Thomas? How many credits are required? You need at least 129 credits to graduate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Brian Helmnick, does Residence Life Office help students find off-campus housing? We do not. However, uh, we work with our colleagues out of the Dean of Students Office, and they have an area called Off-Stamp, sorry, Off-Campus Student Life. Um, so if you search on the St. Thomas website for Off-Campus Student Life, uh, they have a whole area dedicated for this. Uh, they also have a listing, uh, like an apartment and housing listing site based off of there. Uh, they also have some really great resources that come with that about knowing some of the local ordinances with regards to living off campus. Uh, St. Paul uh, does not allow more than four unrelated people to live in a space together. So a house, an apartment, whatever the case may be, uh, which is a really important one because that is something that has gotten students kicked out of their housing off campus uh, for not following that. Uh, so they have a lot of great resources along with that ability. Um, it's, it's very much like an apartments.com combined with like a roommate matching site. So you may be able to find something that is just like a room with other people or a house where someone's looking for a subleasing uh, situation or whatever the case may be. Uh, so definitely something worth uh, checking out. So off campus student life on the St. Thomas website. Thank you. All right, we have a couple more minutes here. Here's one that might be um, answered by a variety of different people. So I'll kind of leave this one up to the group. Uh, what kind of work study jobs are available at St. Thomas? Uh, I'm happy to answer that. that. I'm happy to answer. Um, so we have students that work in offices like ours. Um, there are students that work at the um, athletic facility and either help check in people at the front desk or their job is to wash towels. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, there's a variety of different uh, positions, um, the library, uh, food service, um, there's really just a number of different student positions available. Um, I would say most supervisors want to train students in and have them work for them, for all the years that they're here, that's kind of the goal that we get you trained in and um, you continue to help us over the years. Um, many offices stay open over the summers. Um, so often students can also work in the summer depending on the position. Um, you know, it's possible that some 
some of the uh, positions have changed a little bit with COVID um, in terms of walk-in traffic and needing to uh, deal with walk-in traffic in different offices, but there's other areas like the IRT help desk where students can help with, um, I'm having trouble with my computer, what, how, do I, how do I resolve that? Um, so there's different helplines that are even more busy now than normal probably. I'll actually piggyback a little bit. I know we're running out of time, but um, you asked about internships earlier, or what Tammy just described, that could be your first internship. Your internship does not have to be off campus. An on campus job is a wonderful way to start to build your resume and to have that internship because you will gather, you will gain valuable work experience here in all these different offices that Tammy just described to you that's going to, you know, springboard you to your um, permanent positions once you graduate from St. Thomas. So see it, an on campus job also as an internship. So. Thank you. All right. I think there is one kind of follow up. So I'm going to grab that one. I think might be the last one for this panel. Um, so the question kind of revolves around the 129 graduation requirements uh, at St. Thomas. And the question was, I, I need 129 credits from St. Thomas, or will my credits that I transfer in from, let's say, Normandale, will, how will they count towards my graduation? And Betsy, maybe that wouldn't be a good one for you. Yes, and I just typed an answer to that. So the minimum number of credits to graduate is 129, but you also have to be sure to fulfill all the core curriculum requirements and all your major requirements. And so if you need more than 129 to fulfill all the requirements, you may have to go above 129. Right, and I guess I would add to that St. Thomas does have a senior residency requirement where 32 of your last 36 credits do have to come from St. Thomas. So when you're looking at how many credits you need to graduate from the University of St. Thomas, 32 of your last 36 credits must be St. Thomas courses in order for you to meet graduation requirements. All right, I think that is the last of our questions. Our time is 3.45, I think we went over by a minute. I want to thank our panelists for uh, really kind of giving us some really good information and kind of hanging around and answering our questions. So we will now take a five minute break um, or so, so we can change to our student panel. So please uh, stick around as we make that transition. Thank you.
All right, I'm kind of watching the screen here and it does look like the vast majority of our students have joined us for our student panel. So I want to thank them for taking time out of their evening and uh, spending a little time with us and our transfer um, panel to answer some questions for our group here. Um, I am going to kind of start off by asking the group um, to maybe uh, go through and just give a little bit of information uh, about yourselves. So kind of maybe where uh, you are originally from, uh, maybe the institution or institutions in which you may have attended, maybe just a brief little synopsis of kind of what you're hoping to major in here at St. Thomas, and then maybe a little bit of how you kind of ended up choosing St. Thomas. We'll kind of keep it a little brief, but just give it a little bit to kind of get things going. So think about it as you go. And maybe I'll just call on kind of people as they're going and uh, we'll start that way. So Anna, I think I'll start with you if that's okay. Yeah, my name is Anna Brown. I'm a senior here at St. Thomas. Um, I'm majoring in strategic communication, which is in the communication and journalism track. Um, I attended Gustavus Adolphus College my freshman year. And after my freshman year, I transferred here um, to start my sophomore year. Um, one of the big reasons I transferred here was, uh, you know, it being in the Twin Cities was really important to me and it being close to home. I'm originally from Hastings, Minnesota, which is about 30 minutes from here. So that was something that I um, thought was really important as well. Thank you. All right, Austin, you're kind of the next one in line here, if you could go. Yeah, so uh, I transferred in here from Dunwoody College of Technology in Minneapolis, a uh, small technical college, private school. Um, I had transferred into St. Thomas now into my senior year, uh, transferred as a junior last year. So I've been here a total of two years currently. Um, I'm originally from Cambridge, Minnesota, which is about an hour north of St. Thomas. And I actually own a house up there. And uh, I transferred to St. Thomas primarily due to networking capabilities. Um, St. Thomas has a huge network of alumni and the staff is amazing. And so the ability to network definitely grew by an order of magnitude due to my transfer. All right, thank you. Khalid, I think you're next one on my monitor. I hope I said that right. I apologize if I said it wrong. Yep, that was right. So my name is Khalid. I'm an international student from Egypt. I'm a junior majoring in mechanical engineering here at St. Thomas. Uh, I did transfer from Century College, this community college at Viper Lake. I did choose here because of like their academic program. Like they have a really great engineering program, which is like in the top 50s all over the state, which is like really huge for private college in here. Plus the class size, like classes here isn't that huge. So that give us a good opportunity to have more hands-on experience in labs, which is really important for an engineer, I believe that. All right, thank you. Uh, Lily, you're the next one on my screen. Um, hi, I'm Lily. I'm originally from Maple Grove and I'm a senior at St. Thomas right now. Um, I am majoring in political science. Um, before I transferred, I went to the University of South Dakota and I transferred from there because I just, I really missed being in a city. Um, South Dakota is very, very small. <laughs> so um, I came back to be closer to the city. And I really like St. Thomas so far. All right, Matt, if you didn't figure that out, you're the last one, if you could. I got there, yeah. Um, so I'm Matt, I'm a junior here. I'm in the Opus Business School where I'm majoring in uh, data analytics and leadership and management and operations. Um, gosh, let me think. So I went to Eau Claire before this. I transferred after my first semester there. Um, and I chose St. Thomas because I knew I wanted to do business. And I also knew that I wanted to be in the Twin Cities. Um, and it was either between U of M or St. Thomas and U of M is just massive. So here I am. All right, thank you everybody. Okay, so unlike the last uh, presentation, this is really an open opportunity uh, for you to engage with our current student population. So remember the best way of doing that is using the question and answer tab found at the bottom. Uh, put your questions for our students in there 
and I will ask them to kind of respond. And um, I will go ahead and looks like there are some that are coming through. And I won't necessarily direct, but maybe kind of stop people if we go a little too long to, so we can keep, keep going on questions, but I wanna give all of our students a chance to potentially uh, answer. So the first one we have is, what do you like to do for fun on campus? I can answer that question. Um, for me, coming to St. Thomas, I really had to learn to step out of my comfort zone to start making friends. Um, my first year here, I lived in an apartment by myself. So um, it was pretty isolating. So I knew that I to get out and meet people, I had to join clubs and get a job. So um, for me, I am in an acapella group here on campus. Um, and that was like a great way for me to meet a lot of my really close friends that I have now. And, you know, you then meet their friends and then their friends, and then you just, you know, it goes from there. Um, and also just like hanging out on campus was a big thing too. Like doing my homework in the library um, or making friends in class and asking them to get coffee afterwards was something that like really helped for me. And it was just something that was fun to do on campus as well. I would like to add to that answer too. So from international student perspective, in St. Thomas, we have like the international student office, which is a great opportunity for international students as we have like weekly events. So like every week we'll have like a ton of events like movie nights or like Coffee Tuesdays, which we just like all meet as international students or like even with other students and like try to make friends and communicate, which is like was a really good way for me to get into St. Thompson goals with other students. All right, here's a direct question for Matt. Was it challenging to transfer after your first semester? Um. I would say yes, a little bit. Um, it's always a little more challenging to transfer in after only one semester because you're not really coming in with a whole batch of freshmen. Um, but kind of back to what um, Anna said is that I really applied myself to get involved. Um, I'm on the track team here. I got involved in a couple of clubs and that really, really eased the transition for me. Um, and I, I, I do think that coming in as a second semester transfer um, it was much more of a, of a apply yourself and, and you will get in, get out what you put in. Well, thank you. Um, there's a kind of a theme of, you know, getting involved. Um, and one of the questions is, was it easy for you to make friends when you transferred? Uh, maybe Lily, you can maybe give us your take on that. Um, yeah, so when I transferred, I had been at my other college for a year and a half. So I kind of came in and I was taking classes with like sophomores and juniors. Um, so it was a little difficult at first trying to make friends there at St. Thomas. But then um, as I kind of figured out my major, which is political science, it's a really small group of people who are doing it. So you encounter those same people in all of your classes. And now they're like my core group of friends. So it uh oh, looks like Lily may have froze on us there. Austin, do you have maybe uh, you can step in there and give us your take? Yeah, no worries. I uh, also transferred in as a junior, as I mentioned earlier, and it was uh, it, it's a little intimidating at first. The first class I sat in, I was kind of worried. Uh, it was like 30 people in an engineering junior level class and uh, I think the main thing I learned was that you have to put yourself out and like I think that's what Anna was saying earlier if you put yourself out you'll be able to get out what you put in. And so now, uh, because of the small cohort like Lily was talking about with the major specific you really do get the opportunity to get to know people uh, throughout your whole time there, no matter if you're transferring early or later. Um, you, you have a pretty small group of people in your specific major most of the time so the ability to make friendships is, is pretty easy at St. Thomas, in my opinion. I can add something really quick to that as well. Um, I know a lot of the um, core courses that everybody has to take, like philosophy and theology, they have transfer specific sections, um, which they place people into. And those are usually with good professors. And then you're surrounded by other transfer students. 
So I kind of formed another little group of transfer friends um, just from having three, four of the same classes. All right, Lily, welcome back. I don't know if you had anything additional you wanted to keep adding. Uh, no, sorry, I don't know why I cut out. <laughs> no, it, it happens. Welcome to Zoom, right? So much fun. All right, we have another one here. Um, how are the fitness resources, the gym, et cetera, at St. Thomas? I can answer this. I personally love the gym at St. Thomas. It's super nice. It has like a track upstairs and a cardio room and then a deadlifting and weight room and like separate aerobic rooms too. I think it's really nice. All right, so we have another one. How are your classes going with COVID restrictions? Are they mostly online? Are, they, are your faculty um, flexible? How is that going? What's that like? Um, for me personally, all of my classes this semester are online. So the only time I do come to campus is for work, um, which has been a little difficult for me. I'm a big, I like schedule. I like having a schedule and it keeps me organized and on top of my game. Um, and having it online, you know, most of my, you know, classes, I just do straight from my bed, which is kind of a hard adjustment, but it's definitely a learning curve. And I've learned what works for me, what doesn't work for me. You know, when the weather was nice, I was able to go outside and sit at a park or here at St. Thomas on campus, they have, um, when the weather is nice, they have like a lot of tables. And um, so it was nice to utilize what the campus had to get out and, you know, not do all of my Zoom classes from my room. For me, all my classes are hybrid, which means like some of the classes are gonna be in person and some of them are gonna be online. So for example, if you're gonna meet like three days in a week, I'll meet like two days in person and one day online. So far it's like pretty flexible because even like the days that we gonna meet in person, they're gonna be like cameras and there's gonna be like a Zoom session that's going on and it's gonna record everything in the session, which I feel like is really good because even if you kind of zoom out in the class or you didn't focus that much, you always have that ability to go back and like watch the record of the class, which is really good. And I guess we didn't have that option before, but now we do have it, which is nice. Yeah. All right, any of our other students having a different experience in their classes that they wanna share? Um, yeah, I could go if, uh, if nobody else wants to. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I, I am about 80% online, 20% in person. Um, the one class they're letting us choose whether we come in or do everything online. So there's pre-recorded lectures that you can do asynchronous and then uh, you can go to class as well. He holds the same lecture live. And then uh, even like engineering courses later in like a senior year, our senior design is all online currently. And it actually is working out very well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they start to transition to some of that type of learning in the future because it works a little, little bit easier than trying to get everyone in the same room at the same time. So uh, I think overall St. Thomas has done really well at that transition in my opinion. All right, here's one for Anna. Did you find adjusting uh, from, uh, how did you find adjusting from Gustavus to St. Thomas? Was it pretty easy? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I just feel like when I was at Gustavus at the time, I just didn't really fit in um, with the students and I got a bit bored on the weekends. Um, there just wasn't a whole lot to do. So, and, um, so coming here, I felt like it was a pretty, you know, they're a very different schools. I mean, they're both private schools in the Mayak, but um, 
well, I guess St. Thomas is no longer in the MIAC, but um, at the time they were. So, you know, si class sizes were similar. And the only thing that was really different was the location. And for me, that was what I was seeking was a better location. And so I, I thought it was a pretty easy transition. Um, yeah, it was, I thought it was pretty easy. Good, here's one that's uh, I think fitting for the weather that we have outside. How easy, how e easy is it to get around campus? You know, what are the options and specifically when the weather is not quite as lovely like it has been here the last uh, day? I can take that. Um, I think St. Thomas itself, like the two main campuses, I'm not sure how many of the people in the webinar have seen the campus in person, but there's sort of like North and South campus. Um, and those are very easily uh, walkable from pretty much anywhere. Um, the only difference or uh, kind of hike would be to downtown Minneapolis for the, some of the business courses, but there's a shuttle that runs, I think every 20 minutes, um, which is totally free to St. Thomas students. Um, and I, I, I do think that this is a very, coming from Eau Claire where things are a little bit more spread out, um, it's really easy to get around this campus, even when it's um, slushy or icy or anything like that. All right, um, here's another one. What are the advantages about living in a big city rather than a small one? And uh, is that important to you? Um, I can kind of answer that because I lived in a really small town prior. Um, living in like St. Paul is so much better because you have so many like kind of like Anna was saying like there's just a lot more to do. Um, when I was in South Dakota like every weekend there was absolutely nothing to do and so like moving back to the cities like every weekend like there's always kind of something going on especially at St. Thomas like there was there's always events and stuff going on so it, it's a, there's a big difference and like you can order uber and stuff which like I couldn't even do in South Dakota so just having like those small little things are like really really nice I also think a major part of another reason why I wanted to be in the Twin Cities was networking um finding jobs you know not only for internships but jobs after college um being able to have an internship, let's say in you know January, it's easy to take the shuttle from you know during the time when you know work was not from home. You were able to take the shuttle right downtown Minneapolis, and um, instead of having to just have a summer internship, you could have one during the school year because we're in the Twin Cities. So that was really nice too. Um, yeah. One more thing just about St. Thomas and like the campus and being in the city is that um, St. Thomas is a really residential area of the Twin Cities. Um, so it's not necessarily like you're right in the middle of downtown, but you're only like a 10 minute drive away. Um, so it's, it's nice to have that at your, at your disposal, but you're not always constantly bombarded with um, everything that comes with being in the middle of a big city, um, which I really enjoy being able to get away from that. All right, uh, here's a specific one. What second language class did you take and why? I took Spanish. Um, I took four years of Spanish in high school. And then coming to St. Thomas, I, well, I took it Spanish from eighth grade to junior year. And then I had two, a two year break of not taking Spanish. So when I started registering for classes here, I knew that my, like, I was just like, I'll just start at Spanish one again, because I've been out for two years. And I personally really loved it. I thought, I think that all the professors that I've had for Spanish have been great and super accommodating. Um, and it was, I was nervous about feeling like behind because I haven't taken it in so long. And I didn't feel that at all. Everyone was super easy to, you know, help. Um, and it was just like a really enjoyable class. They found ways to make it really fun, which I really appreciated.
Yeah, I had the same experience as Anna, except I, I had two years off, but then I took a placement test and then I placed into the third and like final Spanish. So I only had to take one semester of Spanish when I transferred. Um, and my teacher was super great. And it was like the transition of COVID. And that was the only class I had online. And so it was really nice each week, like logging on and just having him like chat with us. Cause that was like the only interactions I was having at the time. So I really enjoyed my Spanish class. All right, here's another specific one. Uh, did any of you transfer in the spring semester instead of the fall? And how was that transfer? I did. Um, I talked a little bit about that. Um, but I, I think you, again, you have to apply yourself just a little bit more because you're not coming in with a whole host of freshmen to make friends with. Um, you kind of have to be your own advocate a little more than you would if you're coming in in the fall, um, but it's by no means impossible. You can still join all the same clubs and be in a sport, do whatever you want, um, but it is a little more difficult, I would say. Like me personally, I did transfer in the spring I would say, yeah, it can be a little bit challenging, but at the same time, in the spring semester, new farmers have their orientation, which is a great opportunity to meet like new students and like also transfer students. So I guess take advantage of that, like try to like take like people numbers or like asking them for coffee, as Anna said, because that's a good chance to meet up with like new transfer students in your situation. Yeah, I would agree. I think one of the big differences between a fall and a spring start is that fall, there's a kind of welcome week activities that are going on. So you're on campus and you kind of get a chance to walk around and do some things. Where a spring start, you really have like a weekend. Uh, if you're moving on or your classes start, it, it's more of a quick start to the whole process instead of kind of a, a gradual ramp up. So there is a little bit of a difference, but as everybody's kind of pointed out, there's a lot of different things that are in place to help you make that transition as smoothly as possible. All right, here's a, a fun one for maybe the group. What is your favorite class and why? I could start that one. Um, I actually really enjoyed a junior level engineering course the most called thermodynamics. Um, it's a very difficult course, but the way it's taught at St. Thomas was really like really connected with me. And I actually liked the way that the professor taught it so well that I took a graduate level course with him in, in propulsion systems, which is like he worked for NASA and helped put rockets in space. And so you have the, the ability to, you know, kind of find a professor that you really like and potentially a topic you were dreading and be able to take it a lot further than you ever thought you would. So that's kind of my personal favorite course that I've had at St. Thomas. I'd say mine was um, strategic communications. That's how I figured out my major. It was taught by a professor that's actually an adjunct that runs his own PR company which is another great thing about St. Thomas is you have professors that don't only, they're not just here to teach, they actually like have their own, like they actually work as well. Um, and in that course, we were able to look at different, we were able to tour Best Buy, their headquarters, as well as some small advertising um, firms in the Twin Cities and kind of get a feel of what we were interested in if we wanted to work at, you know, more of a um, smaller company or larger which was really nice and it was it definitely like made me fall more in love with my major just because I was able to see like the product of you know what this major can give me. For me it was like the engineering and graphic design class that was like a freshman level class but it was really fun for me as like that's the introduction of how like to use like 3D modeling and CAD design. And it's like really fascinating and how to see like you can use technology to design stuff and make like 3D models for it. I even I end up with being a TA for this class and the professor was teaching this class. She's like Emery Thomas, which is like a really known engineer and she did publish like a bunch of books. So that was like a really interesting class for me. Yeah, 
Yeah, I would say my favorite class that I took was political theory, which sounds like terrible, but it was so much fun. And the teacher that teaches it is the legal studies head. So now I'm a legal studies minor and I take all of his classes. So I've taken six of his classes so far. Um, and just like a super great teacher and like a really fun class. Um, I would say my favorite was also the first class that I took. Um, it was called Existential America, and it was an English 200 level course um, where the final paper was, I think, 30 pages long, 35 pages. Um, and that being my first college course was kind of, well, the first college course here, I should say, was pretty ter terrifying. And it was like a welcome to college moment. But it forced me to think, and the professor was really interesting. Um, and I think that's kind of a common theme with all of us is that the professors made the class. Um, and that is true for pretty much every class that I've enjoyed here. All right, thank you. Uh, here's a, a good one. How difficult is it to get the classes you want slash need? I personally have never run into an issue of getting a class that like I needed. If I, I feel like, yeah, I've never had a problem with that. If I wanted it, I could get it. I mean, there, I think there was one time that I was on a waiting list and I went in and talked to the professor the first day of class. I was like, I really need to be in this class. And then he like waved it and it was fine. So that's like the only like time that I've ever run into like even like a slight inconvenience with registering for classes that I've wanted. But other than that, I've gotten everything that I've asked. Yeah, I could second that as well. I've never had a problem getting one that I needed. It's more just like you have to be a little flexible in your schedule potentially um, just to make sure that you maybe have to get into a different section or something, which isn't a big deal, uh, especially when you're getting the class you need anyways. So it's more just being a little bit flexible on some of the generals, I think, because they're more competitive for people getting in. And if you show just a little bit of um, initiative, professors are usually really good about getting you in to the classes that you need. Um, if you just shoot them an email and show a little bit of care with it. I've noticed too, I don't know if it's like just specifically St. Thomas, but a lot of students will like take an extra class and then after the first week they'll drop one. So like if you're waitlisted, a majority of the time you can get it because a ton of people will drop different classes and take different classes. So I've never had an issue myself either. Also, I would like add that advisors make like a really good job. Like when the registration open, they'll start like sending you like ton of emails or reminders to meet with them. And even sometimes there would be like holding your account just to meet with the advisor and make sure you're on the right track to register for your classes, which is really helpful because I, I haven't run through any issues so far by doing that, by doing so. Okay, we're getting down there. So just a couple more questions. Uh, here's one for the group. Uh, did any of you have any problems transferring in credits uh, like PSEO or college in the school type courses or any courses from other the, the other institutions you may have attended? Luckily for me, all of the classes that I took at Gustavus transferred but one and it was a gym class. Uh, at Gustavus, you had to take a gym. So Pilates was the only thing that did transfer, which I mean, at the end of the day, wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, I had four classes that didn't transfer over, but they were similar. It was like an art class and a public speaking class. But um, I would recommend for sure, like if you have classes, you can petition them. And I ended up petitioning like six classes and I got all of them. I even got a philosophy class petitioned over. So I would say like, if you're wondering, you can always go through the petition process to petition credits, which is also like really good to get your credits transferred over. Like for me, I was able to successfully like transfer 53 credits from Century College without losing any of them. So. 
I guess it's pretty easy to do so. All right, one last question that kind of goes to um, housing, living on campus versus off campus. Um, you know, I, I don't know if there's a variety of choice there, kind of why, why did you decide to do what you decided to do on or off? Um, so like I mentioned in my introduction, I decided to live um, on my own the first year. So I rented an apartment on Grand Avenue and I lived all by myself, which I chose it because I wasn't, I had a really awful um, experience with my my roommate freshman year at Gustavus. So I had, was a little nervous and hesitant to have a roommate again. Um, but at the time when I transferred here, they had a lot of amazing options. Um, a couple of my friends lived in the all girls transfer house and I know that it, they loved it. And um, yeah, I know that that was like really successful for them. Just for me, I just had such an awful experience with a roommate. So living alone was kind of what I wanted to do at the time. Yeah, I live off campus. I actually live in Minneapolis. So I'm like a 15 minute drive from St. Thomas. And so I had a similar awful roommate experience too. So when I moved, back I actually had a friend from high school and she was like do you want to live in this house with me and five other girls and so I moved in here and I've lived here for the past two years and it's super fun and it's not really that far and if you're gonna like commute to St. Thomas the parking passes like the parking is really really good so I've never had any issues like that as far as commuting. All right, that is all the time that we have uh, today. So I want to definitely thank our student panelists again for taking time out of their busy day to answer those questions. They were all great questions. Um, for the rest of us, uh, there is a Tommy Talks that is going to be going on right after. A link is gonna be dropped in the chat feature. So over there, we're gonna have some admissions counselors. There's gonna be a financial aid counselor, uh, some additional students. Uh, if you want to touch base more one-on-one -on -one and ask some questions that maybe didn't get answered in the live portion of this uh, presentation or things that may have just come up along the way, you can definitely do that. Once again, the link is in the bottom of the chat. Uh, you can also go back to the main event homepage um, and there will be uh, some additional content that you can look at, some pre-recorded about some of our departments um, that are out there. So a lot of really good uh, information. And then on the screen right now, there's also the contacts for your admission. So if you have very specific admission questions about transferring ability of credit and a variety of those things, those three people on the screen right now can help you do that. I want to thank everybody for joining us today in this webinar. This webinar has been recorded. Um, so if you want to go back and visit some of the details that you heard here, or you have somebody that maybe didn't get a chance to come and you'd like to pass us along, it will be posted on our web page in the coming days. So thank you uh, once again, our student panel. And for those of you who would like to join us in the next session, the link is below and uh, have a good night. <laughs>